Welcome back. You are tuned in to Traders Nation. It's my pleasure to have back with us once again as we always enjoy having Mike Larson with us. Mike, welcome to Traders Nation. How are you today? I'm doing just fine. How about yourself? Good, good. Thanks for being with us. Listen, what's going on out there in the real estate? By the way, Mike is a real estate analyst for Money and Markets and we'll give out that website uh, in a couple minutes. Now, Mike, um, what's going on out there as far as real estate is concerned? Um, getting starting to see some a little flash of hope somewhere. Um, new sales homes are slightly down two and a half percent. That's what's being reported. But Mike, um, resale homes on the rise in May two percent. Yeah, you know what we had in in April and I think early May we did have a little bit of an uptick. I think uh, after the Fed came in and tried to save the day yeah. in March with its cuts, I, you know I do think that had an impact. You saw things like the April pending home sales data popped, uh, and now we're getting the May existing home sales data, which showed a small increase. And of course that tracks contract closings, not contract signings. So it's right. a little bit of a lagged indicator of what happened in April sure. and early May. My, my real pro- so you know a little bit encouraging there. The, the pace of deterioration, I guess if you want to call it that, has slowed. Uh, you you know, now we're kind of just uh, bouncing around a little bit month to month in sales. Yeah. But I, my real concern is the outlook going forward. I mean, since those numbers were compiled, we've seen like the home builder optimism index just hit a new low. Yeah. Uh, we saw that the mortgage purchase applications index just sank to its lowest level since 03. And, and then you listen to what some of these home builders are saying. I mean, you know, I was looking at some of the comments out of Lennar, the home builder that reported, and the stock's down a buck fifty right now. You know, chief, chief executive says market not at a bottom, foreclosures are tough as competitors, no signs of stabilization in the field and yeah. on and on. Well, so, the thing is is that the, the home the new home builders they're going to be in they're going to be in an extended period of pain in my opinion. Uh, Mike, and that's because we're going to have to get through the influx of resale homes that are out there. One, people that are reselling their home, two, the the, the foreclosures and short sales. So, they have to compete with all of that. And as you know, it's like anything. For instance, a good example would be the car industry. If you need a new car, chances are likely you're going to go buy a used one. You're not going, you're not going to have the money to go buy a new one. Same thing in the housing market, and they're going to be in a house of pain for a lot longer than what the resale market's going to be. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the inventory is the real killer here. You know, you look at the supply of existing homes on the market, it's running at about 4.49 million units in this, this uh, country. And they're competing against that. And they're competing against that. You know, a normal number is somewhere on the order of 2 to 2.5 million. So you could make a case that we have double the amount of existing inventory on the sure. market right now, you know, from all the foreclosures, from all the investors who are trapped and so on. That's right. So, and, and so that's the real problem. And the new home builders have been very aggressive at cutting construction. Their inventories are coming down, right. you know, little by little month by month, but they're also starting from a high level. So yeah. uh, that's why I think, you know, the rest of this year you might as well write it off. Maybe as we get later into 2009, you're right. going to see a little bit of a better you know, opportunity. Now, now, builders, are they in the resale business at all? I mean, do they have somewhat of an inventory of resale out there that they can that they can advert to until the new home sales pick up? Like a car company. You know, you can go to a, a new car lot, and, and if they're not selling a lot of the new cars, they can switch over to the used car lot and sell those out. No, not really. I mean, That's you know, right. all the the builders they have some spec inventory. I mean, sure. they may build a few homes that they, you know, before they have a contract for them, and that you know, that's kind of their existing inventory and yeah. so on. But no, they're not. You know, most of these builders aren't also in the the resale business, so they they really, you know, they're in a tough spot. They're think, stuck. Yeah, they are stuck. And it, you know, the the thing that I keep getting back to is we had kind of this housing bust bubble pop, whatever you want to call it, sure. when the economy was still doing okay. Now, right. uh, you layer on top of that $4 gas, you're rising unemployment. I mean, confidence, is, there was a stunning figure I saw in the Consumer Confidence Report the other day that, that consumers are the least uh, optimistic about the, out, the outlook for the economy in the 40-some-odd years they've been doing yeah. the survey. Yeah. You know, that, that's a real killer for well, business, too. So a lot, of the, a lot of consumers, though, haven't really seen the kind of pain that we're seeing now since even the 30s, or I mean, since the 30s, 30 years ago in the 70s, I mean. All yeah, right. I mean, you know, you've got this, this combination this inflation kind of thing where, you know, uh, if you're, you're, all your money is going into the gas tank and at the same time joblessness is going up. So, yeah, I hate to sound all doom and gloom, but yeah. it really is a rough market for these guys. And I think, again, the rest of this year is probably going to you know, be more of the same. All right, now let's talk about that. The jobless claims are, are holding steady at this point. I think we're at a 5 5.5% uh, jobless uh, percentage. And let's face it, I mean, that's virtually, you know, there's, if, you're, if you're not working, you're not wanting to work at this point, okay? I know there's people that are losing their jobs because of settling industries, but at this point, 5.5%, that's still low. 
Yeah, it, it is, it, you know, but again, I'm kind of looking at the leading indicators. I mean, thing, you look at some of the announcements in the last month, I mean, whether it's GM, yeah. you, you know, shutting factories left and right, sure. whether it, it, it's Ford, the airlines, I mean, they're basically just grounding, you know, their entire fleet and they're not flying anymore and right. they're firing people left and right. So it, it's the, it, it's the, what's happened in the last five or six, seven, eight weeks that's really got me worried that, you know, we may have another good down leg here in the near term. Right. And you know what? If all those industries that you just mentioned, the problems that they're suffering right now, equates to one thing. There's one thing in that equation that makes it common for all of them, and I think it's oil, okay? Yeah, it, oh, it sure the is. Price I mean, of fuel. It, absolutely, it, it is. And, you know, until until there's something that kind of breaks the back of this commodity run, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not in very good shape, and you kind of have to play defense and hunker down. Right. All right. Now, let's talk about the banks. Uh, the feds, it looks like they're, gonna, they're signaling that they're really their aggressive rate cuts are coming to an end. And so are we going to see banks? Banks are going to start jacking their rates up. Well, you know, here, here's my problem with, with what the Fed did. I mean, as much as it might cause more short-term pain on the growth front, I mean, the Fed really, I think the markets were looking for a signal from the Fed that they're going to at least, if not, you know, start hiking rates, maybe do a token hike just to, to show the commodity in the currency market who's boss, and they right. didn't do that. So, yeah. you know, what happens? Right after the Fed's done, they, kind of, they don't shift to a tightening bias, and sure enough, the dollar starts falling, oil's up a couple bucks today. You know, I think the market was looking for more of a, of a strong stance on inflation, and, and they didn't get it. So, uh, you know, I'd hate to be in Bernanke's shoes. I realize the political pressure that's on them, but at some point, you know, I don't, if it's not $140 a barrel, what's it going to be, 150 160 that's, or something before right. he does something about it? All right, it. so we need, to, we need to head off inflation. We need to, you know, strengthen the dollar, and we may see some rate hikes. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, frankly, as painful as that might be on the growth front, uh, you know, at some point we've just got to take our medicine, and again, the Fed's got to get ahead of this problem. You know, they've been calling for lower oil and lower inflation for, you know, I lost count of how many quarters I've been hearing that message. Right. And it's done anything but but go down. So, yeah. uh, you know, again, it, I recognize and I appreciate the, the tough spot they're in, but, you know, sometimes you've got you to gotta stand up and, and do what's right for the long term. Yeah, all right, governmental intervention in the housing market, you don't hear too much of that anymore. Are they going to step in? Well, you know, right now the, the Senate and the House are hammering out the details of, of, a, of a kind of foreclosure rescue package, whatever sure. you want to call it. Uh, some of the, the trickier stuff seems to have come out of the bill. Now it's mostly focused on this idea of giving a first-time homebuyer tax break and also uh, allowing for yeah. uh, mortgages to be written down. If a bank wrote you a mortgage at, you know, whatever it was, 300000 it's going to write the balance of that down to 85% of the current value of the house, and then you can go and t- refinance it with an FHA loan and pay that lender off. So the theory being the lender eats a loss, you get a mortgage you can actually afford that reflects today's values, and hopefully that will help stabilize things. Why should the lender eat the loss? Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the lender's already eating the loss in, in foreclosures. They're already up, sure. you know, oh, they, they're owed but more than a lot of these homes are worth. At, so. least, at least they own the house. It's not, it's not, uh, and that's not an absolute ri- uh, write-off. I mean, uh, yeah, they don't want to be, they don't want to be landlords, and they don't want to be resellers out there, but at least they, at least they have it on their books. At least it's a hard acid on their books. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, again, all they're trying to do is reduce the foreclosure burden because the idea is, all right, the lender's going to lose a lot of money in foreclosure. He might lose a little less by doing this this scheme, you know, having the balance might not have to be written down as right. much. And also then you get the borrower that may have more incentive to stay. I mean, if he's upside down by 50000 bucks. He's, you know, he's going to hand in the keys if something bad happens. The idea is, well, if you reset his balance so that it's less than the house is worth, maybe he'll say, all right, you know, I still have some equity. I'm going to stick it out. That, that's what they're trying to do. And all right, so maybe they're figuring, maybe they have a threshold amount. All right, so if, if it's past this amount, then forget it. We'll take the house back. If it's within this certain amount, then okay, then we're going to work with you and we'll bite it. It's the lesser of the two for us as a lender. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you know, that there, there is, let's be honest, there is no magic bullet. There is no easy solution to this. Right. You know, this is kind of one of those ideas that, that has gained momentum because, you know, the politicians uh, have to try and keep the lenders happy, but they don't want the consumer groups to be howling and, like, you know, the, let, the government take over these problems. Yeah, they don't want government in the mess because, let's face it, government can't run anything, and they and the <laughs> lenders don't want the feds in their shorts. Agreed? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is probably uh, the better of, of a number of bad options. <laughs> the best thing turn any corporation or business or industry can have is, 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 self, is self-reliant to, to, to regulate themselves. I mean, it really is, outside of, you know, wanting the feds in their shorts. It's well, sure. be- 
you know, it's ultimately going to be lower prices and the market forces that are going to work this out. I mean, there was an interesting stat. As bad as maybe the national market is in terms of home sales, we actually yeah. had a pretty decent pop year over year in California sales last month. And the reason why is because prices tanked. I mean, I think the numbers were prices down 35%, sales up 18 yeah. The reality is if you get the price to a level that people can actually afford it and that looks like a bargain, I mean, Americans love bargains, and they're going to start stepping sure. up to the plate yeah. if you don't get in the way. All right. Do we see that going on right now? We you know, I, I do see that in a few isolated markets. Again, it's the places where things are, are the hardest hit. I mean, here, you know, in South Florida where I live, yeah. you know, you can get a condo that would have gone for two hundred grand at the peak of the bubble for $90,000 now. You know, so, so some people are going to step up and, and see a bargain there. To me, that's a bargain. Mike Larson, real estate analyst for Money and Markets. Of course, you can find Mike over at moneyandmarkets.com, right, Mike? Yes, sir. All right, appreciate your time. As always, Mike, Mike Larson, folks. All right, real estate analyst for Money and Markets, as always. We do appreciate him. Up next, I'm going to have some more stocks, and we may even shotgun a call out. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.